Hey guys, welcome back to some more Majora's Mask. We're about halfway through the dungeon at this point, so what do you say we change things up? Instead of going forward, let's put things in reverse. This dungeon used to scare me as a kid because like the moving pillars you had to drop on and be like, but what if I miss and I can never get on here? Yeah, my favorite thing is you try to dive and then the pillar comes around because it's just a pendulum moving and then you just dive head first into the pillar. <laughs> At that point. Yeah. Yep. Like, how did I not get hit? Or, how, not gonna, how, how did I not get hurt? Yeah, because sometimes when you do that, you actually do get hurt. I remember doing that a lot in Zora's Domain in Ocarina Time, because if you miss the, the part of the water you're trying to hit, and you hit a ground piece, then you just take fall damage. <laughs> oh, God. But you still do the diving animation, so it's definitely a concussion. I heard that little... Ah! <laughs> like the... <laughs> He was so excited by the speed. Using them do bomb boosting tactics. Hey man, the moon crashes down and... Okay, there's the timer. A little over 24 hours from now. We gotta go! <laughs> now this is a speed run. Yeah, look, there's the timer. So what's your estimate of time to, to beat the run? Lester, what's your PB? This cycle. <laughs> you say that and then you fall. So remember throughout the whole Metroid Prime recording, you're over here, Matt, like, this is my best run. And every time you said that, you made mistakes. Yeah, same energy, because this is my best run of Majora's Mask. Uh, that doesn't count. <laughs> it's like, I swear, guys, this was my best run. <laughs> that I've ever done. Didn't say it was good. <laughs> Just saying it was my best. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But no, like, in all seriousness, I think this was my most clean routing run I've done of Majora's Mask 100%, because I do this whole playthrough with the least amount of cycles. Like, this one, I can't remember how many it was by the time we're done, but it definitely is way lower than anything else I've ever done. Because normally when I play this game, I go back and forth in time a good amount just to take advantage of the perma saves, and by that point, it's like maybe 10 or so cycles at the very least. This one's definitely in the single digits. You're one of those guys that runs into the bomb on purpose just to get by it, aren't you? Yeah, why not? I already have many, many hearts. Oh yeah, damage boosting. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's a tactic I use quite a bit. Especially in Metroid games, and that's why Dread Mode sucks. <laughs> I'm gonna damage boost through this enemy, and I'm dead. Because I forgot, it's one-hit KO mode. I did that so many times when I did my Dread uh, uh, Run playthroughs, mainly with screw attack, because I kept on thinking, I can bounce off of things, it'd be fine. No, you die in one hit if you don't insta-kill something with the screw attack, you're dead. So I hope you love changing your arrows a lot in this dungeon, because we're gonna be doing this all the time. This is the one complaint that I have with this version they fixed in 3DS where they separate the elemental arrows into different items technically instead of just equipping over the same item. So you can have both fire and ice arrows equipped at the same time in 3DS. Here it's not really the case. You can kind of trick it out with some equip swap glitching but even then that's still a problem. It doesn't work in the same way as other items for that so it just doesn't really work out. I like how Wind Waker did it. Yeah. Where it was just a button swap. Yeah, it was all just one item, technically. It was just the bow that had all the elemental arrows. Buster, you're killing me, man. You couldn't take those two steps to the chest. <laughs> so, no, my legs don't work. Yeah, you know how many times I broke them? <laughs> you're killing me! Hey man, I gotta save like five five frames. Sorry. It was literally two steps. Exactly. Those five frames make a difference. The moon's coming down soon. Those five frames could be the end of me. And I don't have time to save the animals. <laughs> oh no! You shouldn't have said that. He's gonna jump for it now. <laughs> See, that's why I hookshot the other chest. It was training for this one, because this is the only way you can get to this. So, I, I kind of want to mention something about this room, because this is this is one of the weirder changes that was made with 
version differences, but in the Japanese version of this game on the N64, when you froze the water current in this room, the pendulums actually stopped at whatever area that you were freezing them at, so they wouldn't just freeze in an exact spot every time, which is really annoying. So starting with the international release, they changed that, making it so it stops at a certain point every time, which is way better. Japanese version was much harder to actually get through that room because you had the time at right to unfreeze and freeze things just to get through the room. It was very tedious. My gosh. Why would they do why? I, I don't know either. It was it was too much. That's so stupid. I remember watching Chuggas play through this game and he complained about the how of the the guidebooks for this for this specific dungeon were wrong about a lot of things. Like the official like Nintendo pa like Nintendo approved guidebooks were wrong about a lot of things in this dungeon. Yeah, that can happen, unfortunately. Kind of why by today's standards, guidebooks are really useless on that front because, I mean, now we don't have them being written by the developers anymore of games. It's just going to be outsourced. And even then, sometimes the developers might even miss something in their own guide. So, like, having people who've played the game a lot to compile it, like, specifically with the fans, you get a little more accurate information, doubly so if it's like multiple people contributing so they can change things. Hook shot over to the chest. Yeah, don't jump down there just yet. Yeah, because the problem is if you get too close to that ledge, I believe you can just slide right off too on the other side, or it might just be jumpable, but either way, there's no way back up there. You have to go all the way around the room again. So that's a problem. And who has time for that? We The moon's crashing. Man, that, that, that I can't imagine playing the Japanese version of this game now. It's mainly that one room that's a problem, because the rest of it's fine, honestly, in a lot of regards. Because the water elements in this dungeon is consistent throughout all versions on N64, it's just that one specific part. And then 3DS did change how the ice arrows worked. But it didn't make the ice arrows unusable in 3DS when they changed the design of it, it just made it a little bit more awkward, especially if you did play this version a lot and you used to just kind of put the platforms like right on top of each other just to walk across instead of jumping. You can't do that in 3DS because they're more spaced out. Uh, lesser the straight fairy man. I don't want to swim in there. I'm going to get sucked out of the room and miss, so have her come to me. That's the thing I recommend because that's on a current in that little tunnel the straight fairy's in. And if you miss it, you leave the room and have to pop it open again. So you're better off using the mask for that. Yay, got all straight fairies. And this is the final green pipe we need to activate too, which leads us to the boss. So this is everything. We're done. Gotta go beat up the whatever creatures here. Everyone's favorite boss, apparently. I mean, this one's interesting because for one, it reuses the boss arena of the Shadow Temple's boss Macarena, where you have to jump in. So because of this, it has the exact same glitch as Bongo Bongo, where you can attack the boss before the fight even begins. That's one thing that always got me about this game too, is jumping down that whole Link screens, but then his scream just ends before you end the fall. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's fine. Yeah, and he just lands perfectly. He's like, oh, I didn't need to scream after all. I'm okay. I don't know about the giant fishy, though. Hungry. And it just sees fresh meat. There he is. Yorg! So this is our boss, Yorg. This fish is actually in the arena before you fall down here. So if you can actually shoot this guy before falling down the hole, you can stun him immediately and skip that cutscene. So guess what? There's a glitch you can do to shoot the thing and skip the cutscene. Who would have guessed? It, it, um... It's it's everyone's favorite let's player, Steven York. Yep, for the patty. I mean, he does like fish. <laughs> I have Georg with Steven's face. Just <laughs> Steven Georg. I'm sure he gets tired of people asking him what happened to his last name. <laughs> <laughs> When you think about it. Oh. 
though apparently this boss is very different in, in 3ds version yeah this is another one that was changed obviously with the version differences but the center of the fight plays out the same he does have a whole different second phase where the center platform gets removed so you're fighting him in the water only as zora but essentially part one is very similar we you have to shoot him down enough to reveal the eye in the center and attack that the thing is different in the fight which is like, this is why I don't understand why they did the ice arrow change in 3DS. So, as we were saying, in this version, you can shoot any piece of the water and freeze it with ice arrows. They changed that in 3DS where it's only designated spots where you can shoot it. Except for the York fight. York fight has the water properties of this version, N64. They so can shoot anywhere on the fight to make water into ice. It, it was a weird change that they just ignore for the boss fight. And I get why they did, because then you can fight the guy without the center platform for longer. It's just so weird, because it shows it didn't need to change things. Because it worked fine. Yeah. Also makes a challenge run possible for phase two. And I'm really having cold sweats thinking about that, because it's, oh god, fighting him without the center platform there is the worst thing if you're not fighting him on the water. That's so bad. You can do it, but it sucks. I remember you telling me about that. The only way you can attack York without going underwater is shooting it with arrows at that point. Or with a later mask you can get in this game. It's just the worst. So just fight normally. Don't even bother with the challenge. Help our friend? I don't wanna. <laughs> I don't wanna help your friend. He's been mean I to just me. had to find a smelly fish whose remains I got. I don't even know if I want these remains. Yeah, I smell a fish. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just can imagine the turtle saying that. <laughs> yeah, he just breaks his like super serious tone. It's just talking to Link in like a deep voice and everything. Just like. I I'm thankful for your help. Thanks. Thank you, Link. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> for you. <laughs> like one of those cartoon characters that just has two personalities. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, you ate you you laid eggs because you had a memory. Oh, so that's how birth works in the Zora world. Okay, this is weird. What'd you say, Amber? I, I was gonna say, I gotta admit, every time I see a turtle now, I can't help think of the freaking meme because of Elden Ring now. Oh, is this dog? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this dog. It's ruined everything for me. <laughs> Turtles are ruined forever. Elden Ring. <laughs> hey, where's his other, like, ten keyboards? Yeah, didn't you have like a whole setup with the synthesizers and nine thousand dollars synthesizer? It looks bigger when it's in that room specifically, because out here it looks like a child's store by comparison. Now that's the song we taught him as a human, so I'm definitely waiting for that paycheck in the mail. But he actually, I guess, learns it on his own, or maybe one of the other band members teaches Evan the song. Because if you don't do that whole quest for the heart piece, you still hear them do this specific performance with that song once you beat Great Bay. So I guess he just learns it somehow else. We, we don't know how, he just does. So what do you do? You lit, lit those candles? Yeah, because then that actually lights the stage up. Technically, you're supposed to do it before this whole re rehearsal part even starts, which obviously is before you beat the boss of Great Bay. You talk to Resort on the stage and he can give you some money for doing it. That was one of the last things I actually missed in my Last playthrough Majora's Mask 3D, because that is actually an entry now in the Bomber's Notebook. It's the most, like, random one, or, like, one of the most random ones. So if you want a full notebook, it, it, there's a lot more missables. You say missables, I'm like, I could just reset the cycle and do it over again. I mean, missable isn't like you don't know it exists, because, yeah, there's nothing truly missable to, like, fill out. It's just, like, you're going to bypass it, missable. Hey, you saved Great Bay. It's no longer foggy. And there's really not much we actually need to do here now because 
when you clear the dungeon out, there's really only one extra thing you can do in this area. So we'll be doing that here after we get a Ray Fit reward. But first things first, uh, extend limb. Extend limb. <laughs> You're not supposed to get up here that way, but that works for me. So if you put on Zora Mask in the water when you're at like the edge of the water for some reason you just like get put on the top edge of it like it doesn't put you in the water where you transform you get put up like three feet so you can just grab certain ledges because of that we kind of did that in the great bay temple as well but it's way more noticeable there here you go here's a piece of you Look, Twitch gaming here. That literally is just the Twitch purple. My God, Lester. <laughs> He's not lying, so. No. I, yeah, that is like the same hue. <laughs> I've seen plenty of people with that hair color. Ain't bad. Speaking of not bad or upgrade, we get double defense. Way earlier than Ocarina of Time's like 99% mark. So we can actually use this. That was so weird that you got it so late in Ocarina of Time. It's like, but then again, it. I think of it. I think of that as basically the same in reward you get in Banjo Kazooie. Yeah. Where you get double health at the very end of the game. Like, this would have been useful earlier. Same energy. You're literally getting it right in front of the final boss. Like both have that issue. It's the same energy as Ocarina. It's so pointless at that point. You're just like, what am I gonna do with this now? It especially felt worse to me in Banjo-Kazooie because of how the honeycomb system worked. It was glitched in the first game, so when you got that last six set of honeycombs, it just did nothing. It didn't get fixed in the 360 version. So, like, every time you get the last set of honeycombs, like, well, that feels empty. And you get the double health at the end. It's like, man, you know, maybe I could have got this with last honeycomb. Maybe that would have fixed the glitch. Honestly, that, that always bothered me, too. So I was just like... Because... My health bar would be off, off center a little bit. I'm like, this bothers me. Why is it? That? Yeah, it was just really weird when you played the game for the first time. It got all honeycombs, and you realized, well, that did nothing because you get all your health without the last six. I guess you just don't get the ones up in Sparrow Mountain. Yeah, you could technically skip those at that point for that reason. If you just wanted to get the ones in the levels. Oh, we're playing a minigame? Yeah, so now that we cleared out Great Bay Temple, this guy, instead of just being at home, he decides to run this little jumping game in the middle of Great Bay itself. So what we got to do is jump around between all these different platforms, and essentially we got to jump to them when the torches are lit. Doing that will give us a point every time we land on a platform with fire. And we need 20 points to win the game. As you can imagine, it's a piece of heart. But in... The N64 version, we can actually uh, do something different. We don't have to jump. We can instead stand in one place and get all the points. So I'm going to offer that because it's fun. So here's how you do the game, and here's how we're going to do it. So get to the edge and just slash your sword. Essentially, you're stepping on and off the platform uh, multiple times, which will reset the fire pattern, and you can just gain more points than lose points by doing this. Like, you can see my numbers spike up at certain points, and we just got 10 in the course of, like, three seconds. What the heck, Lester? Oh, my God. Let's try to get a new high score, baby. <laughs> get that 99. Oh Max out gosh. 99. It probably is possible to get 99 in this. I've never gotten 99 before, but I have gotten in the 60s. There we go, past it. And we end with 73. At any point in this game, we could have jumped off by accident and lost everything. Because if you fall in the water, it doesn't matter how many points you have, you lose. Also, a little too easy. Yeah, your score was 20. I came out with 73. I'm an overachiever. <laughs> Note the self. Patch in 3DS version. Did it patch? Yeah, you unfortunately can't do that anymore in 3D. Oh, okay. Well, that sucks. Now you have to play legit, but then you have camera control, at least, if you're playing with the new 3DS nub thing. The nub... Was everyone coined it when the system came out, the C-nipple? Because <laughs> it was just so tiny, and it didn't move. 